Welcome to mini lecture number 12, the last in the mini lectures of 7503 NSE Aviation Economics. In the previous lectures, we've shown the way that airlines do their strategic planning, the way that the outcomes from that are then fed into the airline planning model. We've looked at economic concepts, we've looked at the metrics, we've looked at the mathematics that can be used, the models, the operations research, we've looked at forecasting. All of these have been added together to feed into the airline planning model of planning routes, fleet planning, schedule development and all the other parts of an airline operation. In this last mini lecture we're going to be talking about how to manage the economic issues of startup. That is, if you're starting an airline from scratch, how do you go about doing it? How do you change an airline that's currently in place? What are the future economic challenges facing airlines? And how can we use case studies to help illustrate some of these issues? What we're going to be doing is, first of all, talking about being able to start from a clean sheet with legacy, sorry, without legacy problems. That is, if we take a look at a particular situation, Virgin Blue, it started at the turn of the century as a brand new airline right from the beginning. And it doesn't have some of the legacy problems that in fact have occurred with Qantas because it was a new starter. The one thing is that barriers reduce. For example, a new airline can go in and through uh, and that leasing companies, it can get greater access to the necessary equipment. So it, it can start with brand new aircraft with all the benefits of the new technology and the services through leasing and outsourcing. The one thing they can do is go out and hire the very best experienced executives and staff with the right incentives. And in fact, we see this uh, that happened with Virgin Blue being set up, getting Brett Godfrey, and then when it changed across to a new model with Virgin Australia, it was able to get John Borghetti with a huge amount of experience coming from Qantas. And the one thing is that forecasts show that air travel is going to continue to increase. Problems are going to continue for the future. Here we see a model which is provided by the Boeing company, but this one is pretty much a standard model if we go into any of the research required in setting up an airline. And of course, Boeing as an air, a, a company that advises airlines as to what's required in uh, starting up, of course, is experienced in this area. And of course, the one thing that we can see in this possible startup is all the general concepts that we've been talking about in the course itself. If we look at the area on the left-hand side, we get the airline idea. This is the vision and the mission. That is, what do we want to be, but what are we going to be the day we start? The general industry and competitive analysis. What's the target market? Who are we trying to get? The route structure, the schedule development, the marketing strategy, aircraft evaluation and fleet planning, operations plan, financial model, the management team that we need. Now, all of this is what we've studied during the course. So what you can see straight away is what we've had in the course. Nothing has been wasted. Every bit of it is there to show as to what's required as part of starting up an airline. And of course, we can see that when we go into the launch, we have to get our business capitalization, which we've spoken about in financing. We've got to get the airline operator certification, which of course is part of the requirement of being able to operate an airline. Where are we going to source our aircraft from? Are we going to actually pay for them ourselves or lease them? How are we going to staff them? And how are we going to enter into service? So in fact, Whilst it looks a nice little model that's developed by the Boeing company, as you can see, it's got everything in that we studied in the course. So this is an extremely practical model. We'll be talking about the global market rates. And we can see, of course, that the world economy is predicted to grow by an average of 3.2% a year after 2032. Number of passengers is going to grow even greater than GDP. And the airline traffic growth is expected overall to increase by 5% per year and the passenger traffic, sorry, the cargo traffic 
it's going to increase by 5% as well. So, in fact, what we can see is the predictions that are provided now. This comes from Boeing. Boeing is obviously going to put an optimistic view on it because they want to sell aircraft. But the figures show this remarkable future that's there for air travel. And the historical data shows that even when the world goes through certain hiccups, such as the global financial crisis, 9-11, etc., whilst there is a downturn, short-term downturn, it immediately returns back to steady growth. We can look at the regional market developments and we can see as to, just from this one graph, that in fact the way in which traffic is going to go for the future. Uh, we've got the 2012-2013 uh, figures that are confirmed and we can see that, for example, in North America it's growing fast. Europe, it's growing even faster proportionately. Asia has had a huge growth, but they're expecting even larger growth. And the figures are indicating that, in fact, uh, Africa is about the only one that's got a slow growth, but the analysts are predicting that Africa could be a future growth centre as well. Now, these market developments uh, were done uh, earlier, they are the latest figures from Boeing, but if we take into account the fact that fuel has been taking a real nosedive lately, going from a high a number of years back of $140 uh, per barrel down to $70 per barrel, it's pointing a pretty rosy future for the airline industry. What are some of the major issues we'll be looking at? The transition to and from 9-11. There is a lot to be learned from the 9-11 period because the airlines must be geared up to expect problems such as that. What are the market size and barriers? What are we finding about airlines themselves in their behaviour as oligopolies? That is, what happens is that as we get more airlines coming online, we're finding that we're getting rationalisation as airlines buy up other airlines, such as we've seen in the United States, which has gone from eight major airlines down to four major airlines with consolidation. We're going to find out the effect of excess capacity and low marginal costs. For example, Qantas and Virgin Australia got into a capacity price war this year where they both lost $600 million in potential profits. The sensitivity to economic fluctuation. The global financial crisis left an indelible scar upon the airline industry and they want to make sure that if there are any problems for the future that they will be uh, predicted earlier and people can respond to them. High labour costs. That is, it's a service industry. You can only get your labour down to a certain extent and beyond that, it's hard to go lower. For example, AirAsia is probably operating at the benchmark of 68 people per aircraft on the line, but it's hard to go much below that. Fuel costs. Fuel costs are low now, but what happens when they return to their old figures, which they may do in the future? And if we take a look at the graph here, we can see just how hard it is for the airline industry where the predictions are that fuel will go down, but it is expected to rise. So what we're seeing in this prediction on the long-term oil forecast, we can see it dived at 2010 and it's gone down, but the prediction is it hasn't gone down to the price that people were expecting. It's, so it shows how hard it is to forecast, but overall, Fuel is a source that's going to run out eventually. They are predicting the price will go up. The other big impact has been the impact of low-cost carriers, especially in the US, which has been well studied. And the big thing is the difference between the cost structure of the legacies and the low-cost carriers has been the result of greater productivity in both the use of aircraft and employees. And basically, the US Department of Transport data shows that the US LCCs really got high utilisation rates, much better than the legacy carriers, and they got much higher productivity. And the one thing is that low-cost carriers have been able to get better use of people through more flexible work practices. But the one thing is that we know that the legacies watch the low-cost carriers and they say, we can learn something from them. 
just as the low-cost carriers are probably learning a few things from the legacies in trying to make sure that they get that business traveller. So what are going to be the future legacy strategies? Well, first of all, make sure that they're getting the best leaders. And so this is a really tough battle. Where are the, the future leaders and how can we get them before our competitors get them? Better staff. That is, as we decrease the number of people for the size of our operation, we need to make sure that we give them the best skills possible and we pick the best people in the first place. Cost leadership, that's a big one that makes a difference. If you don't have cost leadership, you're going to get behind your competitors. The profit strategies, that is, how are we going to find those new markets and the new areas of profit? And of course, what we find is the low-cost carriers are starting to find out it's those ancillary services they provide, such as charging extra for baggage going in the hold, charging for services on board the aircraft that would be taken for granted in the legacy. Everyone is trying to find a way to squeeze the maximum profit, including trying to bypass travel agents. And that last one, superior services. Low cost doesn't mean low quality travel. Passengers are better educated before than ever in history and they expect good value for money and they want to make sure that they get that value for the ticket that they purchased. Four key challenges facing the airline industry for the future. How to sustain the current level of profitability. The one thing is competition is forcing people to offer more but also to their costs are still pretty much the same as they've always been. That is, cost leadership only goes so far until you get down to the core cost and not uh, being able to cut further from there. Ensuring safety and security. As we saw this year with MH17, safety is not a given in this world. Something can happen that no one ever predicted. And so safety and security are becoming even more important for the future especially with the instability in the world. Developing an adequate infrastructure. For example, the United States is finding in certain cities that they've reached saturation point and without the next gen air traffic control services, they won't be able to handle that traffic. And protection of the environment. People are conscious now that when they travel, the aircraft are putting out carbon dioxide and therefore that is having a climatic effect. And so what they're saying is, airlines, what are you doing to help make a lower footprint. These are major challenges that are facing airlines for the future. The final thought in aviation economics to finish this last of the lectures. There's a saying by Bob Crandall, the former American Airlines CEO. He said, I was a former finance guy. That's where I started. In the end, the airline business is about lots and lots of numbers. Well, we've seen during the course, it is about lots and lots of numbers. But the big thing is, never ever forget that people create and decide the numbers through their decisions. That is, the human factor is still what makes the big difference between the airlines that win and the airlines that run second best. That's one of the final messages that I can leave to you on this course in that quote. So in summary... You can do the following. You can list the advantages and disadvantages for new airline startups. Describe the startup situation so you yourself could start up an airline without too much trouble with everything you've learned in the course. We're going to look at the, we've looked at the projections for global and regional markets and we've taken a look at all the issues that the airlines have faced and what might face for the future. We've explained how low-cost carrier and legacy airlines, how they will trend for the future. And what we're finding is that there are certain low-cost carriers that are doing extremely well, but low-cost carriers are trending towards legacies in some ways, and legacies are trending towards some of the low-cost carrier characteristics. And we've described the critical challenges for the global airline industry, especially in terms of sustained profitability, safety and security, and this year has really highlighted how um, insecure that can be itself. So, and infrastructure in the environment. Thanks very much. I hope you've enjoyed the course. You will find this course one of the most valuable ones
for a career in aviation because it truly makes you understand the wonderful business of aviation and what's achieved in every minute of every hour of every day in airlines going about their business, doing a fantastic job and doing it with a way that is going to continue growing for the future and building a great reputation. Thank you very much.